Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, hit the bell at the top so you can be notified when we drop new content. Dang, the athleticism might start to go down. It might start getting chinny out of nowhere. All the damage you absorbed that didn't knock you out back then, it might start catching up with you. Honestly, I think Max might need to chill because Korean Zombie, even Saturday, man, there was a few times where Korean Zombie had hit him. I think he heard him. Like, Dang. I think he heard him in the first round that kind of wobbled Max. And, Max and he got him. wobbled himself trying to come in and getting too excited trying to finish him. And I'm like, low key, he had Max hurt, and Max done absorbed a lot of damage. Now, we know Max got his money, though. That's the one thing about it. If something was to happen, at least he done made his money. He can lead a game right now. He ain't never got to fight again. He got a big enough name. Man, I'm glad you brought Max's name up, man. Okay, it's, it's eventually going to happen. Where, man. Like, where do Max go from here? Where does he go, man? And I made a poll about it on YouTube, but I don't know what he should do. Should he fight the winner out of Ilya and He's not going to fight. He can't fight him. He can't because the thing is... You finna say exactly If Volk win, if Volk beats Ilya, nobody wants to see him versus Max 4. The crazy thing is, people actually do because they like Max. And all on Twitter, on Saturday and Sunday, people been talking about now Volkanovski realized he got to fight Max again. No, he does not. That is dead. That's dead in the water. Stop bringing up Max. And you want to tell you why it's unfair? It's unfair. Because what if Max win? And so yeah. now what? Now we got to have a rematch because now you one in three versus Volk. So now Volk would deserve a rematch. He gave you three times in a row. So you technically got to give him. And he probably wouldn't because it'd be easier for him to defend his belt against somebody else instead of fighting Volk, who you know can beat you. So no, nah, Max ain't that type of person, though. He'll right. give him a rematch. Yeah. We're not talking about Islam here. We're talking about Max. Message. So what I was going to say is nobody ever talks about this, but how many times we see fighters lose a fight or they beat somebody multiple times and then they eventually lose. Why do they lose? They lost because they stopped training hard they, you and they tired. lose motivation. They lose motivation. Say like if Volk fought Max for the fourth time and he trained at 30% because he just don't have the motivation to fight him. And then he go out there and he mess around and lose a decision. And, and what if he get knocked out and they say, oh, there's no need for a fifth fight? Well, wait a minute. See, it's just pointless. Nobody benefits but one person, but the one person who benefit had three opportunities. That's the thing. I would like to see Max going up and get a title shot in the lightweight division. That ain't the worst thing. It ain't the worst idea. I hate to say it, man, because even with his 85% takedown defense against Islam, but the thing is, is he going to win? He's not going to win. But it'll be exciting. When you look at the fact that he went up and got beat, pretty bad by Dustin. And then Dustin just got knocked out recently. Yeah. You can't put Max over Dustin. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. And so he in no man's land in two divisions. It's kind of tough, oh, man. His only true hope, and he's still kind of screwed here, is if Ilya can beat Volk. But the thing about that rematch. is, Volk deserves a rematch if he get beat by Ilya. But the one thing about it though, sometimes we see a thing where a person don't lose for a long time, and then when they finally get beat by somebody, they get beat two or three times, kind of like how Max did Jose Aldo. How Even uh, Max himself, because Max lost to Dustin, and then he started losing, and then he lost to Dustin, and then he came back down and lost to Vote and lost his belt. You know what I mean? So let's start off with one loss. So it's like, and then that was an unnecessary fight in the first place, Dustin versus Max. It didn't do anything for anybody. It didn't move the needle for either division. Dustin was already on a win streak. Who cares? You know, and then it was just an unnecessary loss for Max that set off a chain of events to where now he ain't the champion. But he probably deserved a title fight in at least two weight classes, but he can't because the people that already beat him are sitting ahead of him. It's just a bad situation for him, man. His only hope is for Ilya to win. But we've seen, this is what I was saying before I went off on that tangent. We've seen fighters not lose for a long time and they run into one person that beat them two or three times in a row. Normally not three times, normally like two times. So his only hope is for Volk to get beat by Ilya twice. And from what we saw Volk do to Yair, the way Ilya was looking, Ilya had a look in his eyes that I didn't see him have against nobody else. He looked like, man, Volk is better than I thought. And I've been high on Ilya forever. You know, I was one of the first people who said it from day one that I think he's gonna be a champion. And now the time is here for him to fight for the belt. And I'm like, dang, now Volk is a champion. And this is the person you gotta beat to become the champion. I don't know if it's gonna happen, if I'm gonna be completely honest. And that's Max's only chance of getting anything unless something happened and then he might become an interim champ. I don't know what's gonna happen, man, for Max. And I hate to say it, but even him beating Arnold Allen and him beating his last fight against Korean Zombie, those are some questionable opponents. 
you know. Well, Arnold I, Allen wasn't a really question because it was a good no, fight. Arnold, Arnold was a good guy, but he never. He just wasn't. He wasn't there yet. Yeah, he wasn't there yet, man. And, but and, the Korean Zombie fight never made sense because you got the most hittable guy in the UFC history versus the guy who had thrown the most punches. We knew what was going to happen in this fight. Every poll was like hovering between eighty-five and ninety-three percent in favor of Max. We knew what it was. It's just, I guess they wanted to share the octagon because maybe Korean Zombie knew he was going to be on his way out. He wanted to share the octagon with Max. I get it. But from a marketability and a ranking standpoint, we knew what was going to happen with this. We ain't never seen Max not about that with one punch, man. But yeah. Korean so wild and so predictable with his punches that Max was able to catch him and knock him out. And I want to say this, man. Korean Zombie, I want to say he's had a very unfair shake. I know there's no such thing as the fair except for what comes to your state every year. <laughs> <laughs> but if there was a person, bro, who really kind of got a bad end of the stick, it was definitely Korean Zombie because he missed two years of his career due to the mandatory military thing in Korea, which I'm not saying that was unfair because he was in shape, obviously, and stuff like that. He came back winning. But when he was fighting before the military service, Jose was a champion. He lost the title fight. Remember his shoulder got dislocated or something? Yeah. Was that him? Okay, so he was getting beat anyway by Jose. But the simple fact that you finally get a title fight and you got to fight one of the GOATs. And then, let's say if he wasn't injured, let's say if the fight with Max had happened when it was supposed to back then, let's say if he didn't have the two years military service, he would have fought Max. Max was the greatest of all time then because he beat Jose. Let's say then, let's say if he worked his way back into another title fight, Volkanovski would have been the champ, the greatest of all time. At no point in time would he have not had to fight one of the greatest of all time but to he, become a champion. But even if he would have beat Max, where did he go from there? If Korean Zone would have beat Max Holloway, what, he was going to fight Volk? No. You know what I mean? So I, just, Ilya? You can't even put him in there against Arnold Allen. Josh Emmett. You can't put him in there against none of these guys, man. But he has had a good career, man. I will say this. One thing that hurt his career above all else. He don't throw no jab? No. Well, that too. No, there was a fight. That Yair fight. That oh, yeah. Yair fight put a cloud over him worse than anything else. Something about that fight, man. The only thing is, man, when he fought against Max, he looked like his normal self. Wild, don't set nothing up. And that's the thing. He took about chances. Because prior to the fight, he wasn't really taking chances because he had been knocked out. And so the Korean zombie that fought against Max Holloway, he actually came out and he took chances like he normally do. But see, that's how he got his name in the first place. But this is why, even back in the WEC, man, when he was fighting Leonard Garcia, I did not like that style because I knew it was going to catch up one day. I was like, man, one day you're not going to be able to eat those punches. One day you're not going to be able to dodge those punches. Well, he wasn't dodging them technically, but one day you're not going to be able to just duck your head or put your chin in the air and swing left hook, right hook. You can't do that. And I honestly believe if he had fought just a little bit better. He could still be exciting, but I'm saying have a jab, more feints. And keep your hands up, Don't man. eat as much damage and, and just keep your hands up. You can still be exciting, but just a jab, keep your hands up. I honestly believe Korean Zombie will be a contender today. The Korean Zombie that showed up Saturday, if he had not absorbed all that damage and was so chinny, I honestly believe he might have been able to beat Max, if I'm being honest. But it's just all that damage cut up. But it's funny because Max done absorbed a lot of damage too. And for some reason, Max, no, but the thing is, Korean Zombie, he never put his hands up. Yeah, that's true. He fight with his hands down the whole time. Like if Max get hit with a big punch, them hands coming up, and you know, it might be a while before you catch him with another big punch. But Korean Zombie, he rely a lot on his grappling too, man. I know even with Max, he got hurt, he started to clinch up and grab and stuff, man. And it's just Max, he keep his hands up high at all times. But Max do eat a lot of punches though. I think he got a record for eating a lot of punches too, man. I think it's it's kind of like yeah. both ways. I'm gonna have to go find that exact step. It's different between you when you're fighting and you're absorbing punches with your hands up and you're absorbing partial punches. Well, Max get hit pretty hard though. A lot of times, Max head go flying back when he get hit. Because a low key, Brian Ortega was landing some stuff on him too. It just, he couldn't keep up with Max. Yair was landing on him. He just couldn't keep up with and, Max. And this is the unfortunate thing about MMA. A lot of times, fighters retire because they lose the way Korean Zombie did. They get knocked out and they realize, oh, I can't continue to compete with these guys no more. And that's just the unfortunate thing about MMA. I hate to say it, but. Yeah. But it's just one of those things where it's hard to go out like a Robbie Lawler. Because realistically, Robbie Lawler could have gotten knocked out too. Oh, he fought Nico, man. Nico. But Nick, nah, but every now and then, Nico is lightning in a bottle. It's lightning in a bottle. It could have I'm happened. saying, if he would have fought Jack Della or. No, but I'm saying, even Nico is one of them dangerous people. You never know what you're going to get. 
We've seen Nico get dropped and still come back and win by knockout. We've seen him finna knock somebody out and then get but knocked out But what I'm, I'm saying is Robbie got kind of lucky. Say his last fight would have been against somebody who was a little bit more consistent than Nico is. No, you're not. You're missing the point. Nico is like in a Oh, bottle. he's still dangerous. He's a 50-50 fighter. You know and what I'm, I'm saying? saying? It was a 50% chance that that fight could have went the other way too. But that's what I was saying though. He got kind of lucky when he fought somebody like Nico. It, it could have been I worse. I wouldn't consider it lucky. Like I said, he literally could have gotten knocked out, man. That It ain't really lucky. That he was fighting Nico because we could have. Well, we've been saying that about Nico for years. He's and he alternate wins, but that's the whole point. He'll win two, lose two. You know, he'll win the next fight by knockout by something crazy, and we'll be like, okay, he's back, and then he'll get beat again. And it's just you never know what you're gonna get, man. But they weren't gonna put him in there against no Jack Della Madalena. That wouldn't make no sense. But the way they've been scheduling these fights lately, they might have done something like that because they've been scheduling these fights terribly lately, man. I don't know who been making these fights, man, but but yeah, man. But shouts out to Korean Zombie. He ended it on a good note. He might not have won the fight, but he won the night. That's what I saw somebody on Twitter say. That was kind of good, man. So it was kind of sad, but I mean. Yeah, it was kind of sad. And before the fight, he was like saying Max and had no knockout power. And then it seems like every time Max caught him, he hurt him. But that was because every time he caught him, he caught him clean because his hands was down. Or he caught him swinging in a big punch. Because see, Korean Zombie did this thing where he's over a swing and Max would just throw yeah. something. I'm like, bro, how did you throw your punch first and you got hit first? How? That style, man. But he gave us a lot of good memories, man. He got one of the first three twisters. I think he got the first twister in the UFC. He got the fastest knockout in history, the fastest featherweight Why knockout. Why did the UFC allow this fight to happen? He should have retired after he lost the vote. He did retire, but the translator didn't translate it right. So I guess he just wanted to share the octagon with Max. And there was the only two people available. Josh, Ilya, everybody had fights coming up. Yeah, everybody was scheduled or just came off a fight. Yeah. And so it was the only thing. But boy, that was criminal. When they made that fight, I said, this is evil, man. They were on.